Parker, the world leader in fluid connectors and tube fittings, presents the Exactol 400 series tube benders. Lightweight, portable machines that are easy to operate and can be vice or bench mounted and used for mandrel bending. Exactol 400 series tube benders come in three models, the 412, 420, and 424. Each model number identifies its tube capacity. For example, the model 412 can bend size 4 through size 12 tube or quarter inch through three quarter inch. The model 420 can bend sizes 4 through 20 or quarter through one and one quarter inch. And the model 424 bends sizes 4 through 24 or a quarter through one and one half inch. Whichever model you have, this video guide will take you through the various preparation, operation, and maintenance steps, including setup, bending procedures for medium to heavy wall tube, mandrel bending procedures for thin wall tube, maintenance, and troubleshooting. Because your 400 series tube bender comes pre-assembled, setup requires only vice or bench mounting. For vice mounting, just clamp bender's lower square part in a vise with the crank handle facing the edge of the bench. Then install the crank handle onto the drive nut. For bench mounting, you need a bench mounter adapter. Secure the adapter base with bolts placed in the four mounting holes in the corners of the base. Bolt the sliding portion of the adapter to the bender. Then install it in the base. Then install the crank handle onto the drive nut and you're ready to select the radius block. For that, you'll be referring to your model's specific 4391 bulletin. Now we'll get into procedures for bending medium to heavy wall tube. First, the tube bender should be mounted in a bench vise or in a Parker adapter assembly that's fastened to a bench. Make sure the tube bender is clamped tight or securely bolted down. Next, refer to the chart in your bulletin to select the radius block that matches the tube's outer diameter. The smaller radius blocks are made to drive with two pins, the larger blocks with three pins. So make sure the number of drive plate pins matches that of the selected radius block. Add or remove a drive pin if necessary. We then recommend you lightly grease the center and drive posts so the radius block will slip on easily. Now, handling the block carefully to avoid nicks, mount it on the posts, positioning the block so the zero degree mark faces toward the handle end of the bender. Now it's time to mark the tube for the first bend, measuring from the tube end to the desired center line location. Use a sharp pencil or marker to make the mark. Then position the tube in the open tube clamping device so the mark is lined up with the desired degree mark on the radius block. Now for the slide block. Select the proper slide block groove for the tube's outside diameter. You'll see the sizes on the end of the slide block. Lightly lubricate the slide block. Then place it against the vice face with the end of the block aligned with the zero degree mark on the radius block. Use the adjustment screws to move the slide until it rests firmly against the tube. It should be snug, but also allow the block to slide easily. Install the tie bar for tubes larger than 7 eighths of an inch. Now it's bending time. This is done with the crank handle. Rotate the handle until the desired bend angle is reached. By the way, it works the same whether your bend is 90 degrees or more, all the way up to 180 degrees. If your tube is long, make sure you support it so it can't sag. After bending is complete, remove the tie bar, if it's there, retract the slide block vise, and remove the slide block. Then loosen the wing nut on the clamp, Open the clamp and pull out the tube. To reset for more bending, turn the worm wheel shaft counterclockwise to disengage it. 
Then turn the radius block back until the zero degree mark is at its original point. Now we'll cover the mandrel bending procedure, typically required when tube wall thickness is less than 7% of the outside diameter. Check the chart in your bulletin to know whether a mandrel is needed. If so, you'll need a mandrel, mandrel rods, and mandrel rod stop assembly. For models 420 and 424, you'll also need the mandrel rod stop assembly adapter or riser. First, you need to bench mount the bender using the procedures noted earlier. Tighten the flathead screws in the bottom of the adapter slide. Then put the bender in the mounting assembly with the drive handle shaft axis parallel to the T-slot. Draw a center line for the mandrel rod stop assembly to the right of the reference mark on the adapter assembly. Position the rod stop assembly and height adapter on this center line with the mounting hole nearest the bender and about 46 inches from the adapter. This gives you enough space for one 48-inch mandrel rod. Add 48 inches for each additional rod needed, depending on the length of the tube that you're bending. Now, use the chart in the bulletin to select the proper radius block. Then choose the mandrel based on tube outside diameter and wall thickness. Screw one end of the mandrel rod onto the mandrel and the other end into the adapter. Then screw the adapter into the rod stop assembly. Notice the scribed line on the circumference of the mandrel. For average bending, the mandrel should be adjusted so this line is 5 eighths of an inch behind the zero degree mark on the radius block. Turning the lock nuts on the mandrel rod stop assembly makes adjustment. Movement of the mandrel in either direction can cause tube wrinkling, breaking, or flattening. Next, adjust the adapter slide by loosening the Allen head screw in the slide adapter base. Move the bender to adjust for the radius block. Lubricate mandrel with grease to ease the bending process. Install the tube over the mandrel and mandrel rod. The procedures for marking the tube, clamping it, selecting the slide block groove, and placing the tie bar, if required, are all the same as the procedure for non-mandrel bending. To make the bend, turn the crank handle clockwise until the desired bend angle is reached. As the bend occurs, the slide block travels with the tube, bearing lightly against the radius block. This forms the true round die that provides a smooth, full cross-section bend. Once the bend is complete, retract the slide block vise and unscrew the wing nut on the radius block clamp. Then remove the tube by sliding it back along the axis of the mandrel assembly. Now that we've covered setup and non-mandrel and mandrel tube bending procedures, here are a few tips on maintaining and troubleshooting your Parker Exactol tube bender. Make sure you keep the drive pin area and clamp face clean of dirt and grit. Lubricate the threads of the slide block clamp mechanism on a regular basis. And clean the grooves of the radius blocks and slide blocks on a regular basis. As for troubleshooting, if the tube slips in the radius block clamp, the clamp may not be tightened. Tighten the wing nut on the clamp or you may have the wrong radius block. Check the chart in your bulletin to make sure the block size matches your tube size. If your tube is flattened or misshaped, you may need to use a mandrel for bending. Check the chart in the bulletin. Or you may be using the wrong slot on the slide block. Make sure the slot matches the tube size. Finally, if the bender is difficult to crank or operate, the tube wall thickness may be too large. Check your bulletin's capacity chart to confirm that your bender is rated for your desired tube wall thickness. Your slide block may also not be adequately lubricated, so lubricate the surface that contacts the clamp face. 
the Parker Exact Haul 400 Series 2 Benders. Easy, fast, portable solutions for all your tube bending requirements. If you need more information, please refer to your owner's bulletin or see your local Parker representative for further tube bending procedures and training. Thanks for watching this video.